Today I'm starting a series called Overcoming. Overcoming. And uh, the title of today's sermon is How to Outlast a Tough Season. How to Outlast Tough Times. And uh, how many of you know as bad as life can get, and life can get bad quick, I'm talking in a matter of seconds, everything in your life can change just like that. Just like that. Take your last breath, just like that. You could be in heaven, just like that. Or you could be in hell, just like that. So today, I'm trying to, I'm going I'm to break this out for you. How, how in the world do we make it through tough times? And I don't know how about you and your life, but sometimes my life, Johnny, just stinks. Sometimes I get thrown under the bus. And just watch this. If you get thrown under the bus, keep rolling. Just keep rolling, and eventually you'll get out on the other side. But it's important if you get thrown under something, you get out. Don't stay there. Scott, if you stay there, the big old bus is going to run over you, okay? So how in the world do, do we get out of this stuff? And so life can be bad, but how many of you know God is still good? No matter how bad it gets. Man, God's still good. It's hard to say that because, listen, it's easy to say that on a Sunday morning when things are going well. But on a Monday when the devil's after you and things are not looking too good and your kids gone wild, it's kind of hard to say that sometimes. But I am so thankful this morning that my God can outlast a bad season. I am so thankful that my God can outlast a bad season. So my job today, I'm commissioned by God to stand in front of you to break the, the reign of God from heaven and lay this word at your feet. And you've got a choice. You've got a decision. You can stay as you are or you can change. You can stay as you are or you can change. Psalms 1 is where we're going today. We're going to take this series out of Psalms. And um, Psalms 1 says King David gives us some advice. How many of you know if, if it's in the Bible and it, it's worth looking at? It's worth saying, you know what? This is my fix. This is where I need to go. But a lot of people don't want to go to the Bible. They'll go to everybody else but the Bible. So King David gives us some advice on what to do in tough times. David tells us how to outlast them. How to outlast these tough times. How do we prevail? How do we find strength and power? And how do we do these things through tough times? And how do I find peace in the middle of the storm? How in the world, am I, what am I going to do? And so today... I'm going to read some scripture to you, and we're going to take this text, and I'm going to preach a, a word to you. I really believe it's a now word, because we've got a lot of hurting people right now, hurting nation. But God's got a word for it. Scripture, Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. I'm reading out the King James today. If you're there, say amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to win. Come on, come on, say this again. We're going to win. Yeah. you got to believe this stuff. This is where the rubber hits the road. You can be a good little Christian, a good little Baptist all you want to, but that won't work. I'm telling you what's going to work is this Bible. This word's going to pull you out of, out of the pit that you're in. Psalms chapter 1 says this. Blessed. Everybody say blessed. blessed. Everybody say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah, hallelujah. Blessed is the man, listen, that walketh not. God always gives us how, how we are blessed, but God all of a sudden says, blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Very important you hear this word today, that if you want to be blessed, you cannot walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Can't do it. Watch this, what he says. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law. He, it makes God happy when you read his word. It smiles upon your life. In his law doeth he meditate day and night. Everybody say day and night. Day and night, not just on Sundays or when you feel good. I'm telling you, day and night, you've got to meditate upon God's Word. You've got to let this Word start steering in your spirit, okay? He says these words, verse 3, and he shall be like a tree. We just, we just sung this. Planted by the rivers of water that springeth forth his fruit, her fruit, in his season. Listen, you're not going to stay down forever. You may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but you're not going to stay in that valley too long. You're going through, amen? You're going through that valley. He says these words bringeth fruit. And watch this. His leaves also shall not wither. 
He said, you're like a tree planted by the waters, the streams of living water. And not only will you grow, he says, you're going to have leaves that's going to prosper and not wither. It's amazing. Well, we got to follow it. Watch this. He says these words. And whatsoever, everybody say whatsoever. Now, here's where it gets dangerous. That means anything. Whatsoever, whomsoever comes to the Lord shall be saved. That's why we're not Calvinists around this church. We believe in the whosoever gospel. Whosoever comes to God shall be saved. And he says, whatsoever, it's very important, whatsoever. Underline that, because I, I can see Christians now. Well, I, I believe a little bit. No. He says, whatsoever he doeth shall, whatsoever, whatsoever he or she does shall. I didn't write this book. I believe you better stick with the author. And listen, God gave this to me Wednesday night, and I'm going to give it to you. If you're taking note, take note of this. God is the author and the finisher of our faith. But he will not finish what he did not author. Woo! That means a lot of y'all doing stuff that you know God's not blessing doing. Where's God? Where's God? He didn't start it. And if God didn't start it, He's not going to finish it. But if God is the author and the finisher of our faith, whatever he starts, he will, he will finish it. Whatever he's in. So God is the author and the finisher of our faith, but whatever he didn't author, he's not going to finish. He's not going to finish it. So watch this. The ungodly, all of a sudden he said, you want to prosper? Do this. And all of a sudden he switches gears. Verse 4 says, the ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Watch this. They're here. They're there. They're everywhere. They get mad. They go here. They do this. They do that. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Y'all don't like it, but it's good. Verse 5. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment. And I just said to us, hold on. I thought the ungodly is going to stand in judgment, God. Because in Revelation, it says they're going to stand in judgment. And all of a sudden, God spoke into my spirit. He says, you know why they're not going to stand? Because at this time, they're going to bow. They're going to bow down. And all that old ungodliness that they're doing and living and doing all these things amazes me. We got 20-some-year-old people that are driving Lamborghinis and all this other stuff. And people said, man, I want what they got. If they didn't get it the right way, I don't want it. If they're selling drugs to get it, why would you want something of the ungodly? Oh, they may get it at 25, but they'll be dead by 28. I don't want what they got. I want what God has for me. I want what God has for me in this church. I want what the Holy Spirit of God wants to give me. And if it's not of God, get away from it. Get away from that old stuff. He says these words, he said, they want, he said the ungodly will not stand in a judgment. Because why? They're going to bow down, Sheila. They're going to bow down. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is God. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. He says these words, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. I finally figured out why sinners can't hang around in Elkhorn so much. If they sin... And they're doing wrong. They have a hard time sitting at Elkhorn. You know why? Because we believe in the power of conviction. We believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. We believe that you can't live wrong on Friday and die right on Sunday if you don't get it right with God. You can't live wrong and die right. You can't do it. So that's why lost people, you'll see them all of a sudden start squirming. They'll start squirming. And the heat gets on. And all of a sudden they get out. You know why? Because they can't hang around the righteous stuff because they know they're living in sin. And if they're living in sin, they have a hard time coming in a holy God service. So now you know why people get up and down, up and down, up and down. Because all of a sudden, man, when the word, the rain of word and the music goes forward, all of a sudden the ungodly who's there sitting there going, oh, no, preacher's got my digits. Oh, no. Oh, God's doing something. I got to get up. I got to get out of here. I can't stand no longer. How many of y'all know that's a true word straight from heaven right there? When the word and the conviction goes forth, you've got to make a decision. Am I going to obey him or am I going to run from him? That's why the Bible says the ungodly can't sit where the holiness of God's at. Because, man, they get the eebie-jeebies. They get a fire under their blessed assurance. And all of a sudden they start running, not from us, but from the Lord. 
and they got a vicious cycle going on. Look at this. Verse 6, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Sin has a payday. Y'all watch me. Sin has a payday. Sin has a final date. Started thinking about this a little bit. Got a little excited. But I love that all throughout the Bible, we see people who were strong and also weak. Now listen, religious people's not going to like what I'm getting ready to tell you. You're going to squirm a little bit, okay? But this is the Bible. Y'all remember Abraham in the Bible, he was known to be the father of faith. Father of faith. But do y'all also realize his weakness was he had a lying problem? Come on now, good Baptist. Do you know that Noah, who built an ark, worked 120 years on an ark for a big old flood that's going to flood the whole world? It just didn't flood Israel, it flooded the whole world. And all of a sudden, do you know that Noah is known for building the ark, but you know that his weakness was he had a drinking problem. I got a drinking problem. Noah was considered a drunk. I told y'all ain't going to like this. You're really not going to like this sermon. You may, I hope. But if you don't, you'll get over it. Peter is known for being big, Bad, bold, and courageous. But do you know he had a bad temper? Do you know a centurion soldier walked in the garden and there was Peter, big, bad, and bold, redhead. Watch the redheads. He grabbed a knife out of his pocket, a sword, and this dude was coming toward him and he cut off his ear and his ear fell on the ground. See, he wasn't aiming for his ear. He was aiming for his throat. He was wanting to kill that dude because that dude was coming in to get Jesus. He was aiming for his throat, but he hit his ear. Now, I know people sitting there going, oh, my. It's in your Bible. It's really good stuff. And all of a sudden, Jesus, I love Jesus so much. Here's what Jesus did. He walked over where the ear was laying on the ground. He looked down. He said, daggone it, Peter. <laughs> Wayne, he bent down and grabbed the dude's ear. Like a Mr. Potato Head. And went over there and went, poop, pop the ear back on the dude's head. Now, I'm not going to lie. I left the ear laying on the ground. You say, Rev, you should have done that. You put pick that ear up and pray to bless. It was ugly. It was little. It was bleeding. And it was on the ground. I would have said, Taylor County Regional Hospital about five miles down the road. That's what, that's what I would have said. But here's the deal. God, Jesus loves people so much. Even when we make a mistake and slice somebody, cut somebody, and do things that we shouldn't do, he looks at us and says, daggone it. And reached down and grabbed the dude's ear. Oh, what about this one, King David? King David. King David was considered to be a man after God's own heart. But his weakness was women. It wasn't just women. He killed the dude named Uriah. He killed the woman's husband. But David was considered to be a man after God's heart. And all of a sudden, he wasn't just a murderer, but he was an adulterer. And I started thinking about all these people who were a mess in the Bible. My name should have been in the 67th book. Because how many of you know you are a mess? Come on now. We ain't got all this stuff together. Man, I'm telling you, I'd have probably been like Peter, to be honest with you. Here they come after Jesus, and I say, well, I love you, Lord. I'm going to follow you all days of my life. By the time the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. See, we like to consider ourselves all religious. But we all need help. So my job today is to convey a word into your heart, into your spirit. What do we do during hard times? David had hard times, and you've got to realize something. Listen to me. You've got to realize you got to learn that bad times come to good people. Nobody's exempt. Everybody here is going to have some hard times. You're going to have some tears run down your cheeks at times in your life if you call yourself a child of God. You're going to get hurt. You're going to have problems. You're going to face sickness and disease. Because why? We live in a sin-filled world. And as long as we are here, 
we got to deal with this stuff. So how, Daniel, do we deal with it? How do we do it? I thought about Psalms chapter 23, verse 4. It said these words, yea, this is David talking in Psalms 23 after Psalms 1, Bobby. He had to learn a lesson. So he finally got to Psalms 23, and I love this, Judy. He said these words, and I wrote it down. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I love this stuff. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. And I thought about where in this verse could we fit in. And I said, and God just welled up in me. He wanted me to ask you today, and I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. David says, though I walk through the valley of a shadow of death, why are you afraid of a shadow? Why is Christians afraid of a shadow? A shadow can't hurt you. Oh, you may be able to see it, but it's really not that person. It's just a shadow. And that's exactly what the enemy does to you and I in churches and at home, in marriages, at school. Jared, no matter where y'all are at, all the devil does is throw y'all a shadow. And it scares us to death about a shadow, and it's no truth to it at all. And God wanted me to give you this because King David finally understood this. He said these words. He said, how in the world can I make it through a tough time? Number one, you've got to realize that God is with you. God is with you. I, I, the government is not with you. Brother Brian is going to let you down. But can I tell you, my God has never forsaken the righteous. His seed has never begged for bread. I'm telling you, my God is on time in this house. Woo! He's on time in this house. Number one, God is with me. You got to write that down. God is with me. Number two, you got to realize not just God is with you, but his rod is with you. Rod means protection. That God is your protector. Number three is his staff. His staff in the Hebrew means deliverer. So what God wanted me to share with you today, real quick, is these words. God is with you, and God will protect you, and God will deliver you. Somebody help me praise him. He's in me. He's with me. He'll protect me. And no matter what I'm going through, my God said he is the staff, and he will deliver me. He will deliver me. And it's time that the churches rise up and say, you know what? I know it don't make sense. I know people's rising up against me. I know I don't understand the Bible. But my God said, he's with me. He protects me. And he shall deliver me. He shall deliver me. So how do we do it? One point. How to outlast tough times. Meditate day and night. Listen to me, meditate day and night. This is a, such a good word, such a good word. How to, over, how to outlast tough times, number one, meditate day and night. Meditate. David said, how do you get through tough times? How do you get through a tough season? How do you get through a bad doctor's report? How do you do this? You meditate day and night. Now listen to me, this is where it gets, this is where it gets hot in here. Y'all ready? Meditate in the Hebrew means this, these words, self-talk. Listen to me. Self-talk. When God said here in verse 2 of Psalms chapter 1, he says, you meditate on me day and night. What God is saying, you can mark off that meditate. He says, what you've got to do, you've got to self-talk yourself about me all the time. You've got to train your brain. I wrote this down. In other words, when the devil starts talking, you start talking. When the devil starts throwing something at you, you've got to square that joker up and you've got to say, that is not what my God said about me. That is not what my God wrote about me. See, you've got to quit reading about Peter and you've got to put your name in the Bible. You've got to quit reading the Bible like a fictional book and it's got to become a reality to your life. You've got to quit saying, well, it's good for Jenna, but it's not good for me. Because if it's good for Jenna, and God is no respect for a person, hallelujah, it's good for Brian Keith Rafferty also. And it's good for you. Every word in this Bible has a purpose for you. Everything. Everything. Everything's got a purpose for you and I. God said in Psalms 1-1, if you're going to get through these tough seasons, listen to me, y'all grab your toes real quick. He says, you cannot, if you want to get out of this, this old tough season, you cannot hang out with ungodly people. 
Listen to me. Put your steel toe boots on because I'm telling you the truth, okay? If you're having a hard time in your life, if you're going through a tough season in your life, don't you dare call an unfaithful, lost, undone, not born again person and ask them how can you get closer to Jesus Christ. It does not work. It don't work. Watch this. If you're having marital problems, don't go ask somebody who's been married seven or eight times about how to, how to fix your marriage. Oops. I had a Britney Spears moment. I did it again. But here's the, don't listen. You say, Ryan, you say, Ryan, you made me mad. I always tell you guys, I'd much rather, I'd much rather offend you and see you in heaven than you love me and I see you, you go to hell. So we as God's people have to realize this. Listen to me. The Bible says, don't listen to him. He goes even deeper. He said these words, don't even stand with sinners or sit at the seat with the scornful. In other words, don't sit with them, don't stand with them, and sure, don't listen to them. Hello? Hello? If somebody's got a gossiping problem, you don't want to call them and say, hey, you heard about so-and-so? You don't want to do that, coach, because you know what that does? It starts it up. Starts it up. Starts it up. The best thing we can do is watch this. Pray. 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 There's a reason why in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, the disciples said, Above all things, God, teach me how to pray. Teach me how to pray. God, I want to be closer to you. Teach me to pray. God said, if you're going through a tough season, don't ask the lost and the undone. Don't go to the ungodly for godly counsel. Don't go to people who don't have a relationship with God and start asking them what to do. God says that, that, won't, that will not work. So see, the word says that when the devil comes at me, and I wrote this down, and I want to give it to you because this is what I do. This is my journey. This is what I have to do every day of my life when I wake up. I have to make up my mind, and I tell myself, I preach myself happy. I've got to tell myself, no, 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 I, I, I'm not going to lose. I'm going to win. I am blessed, and I am highly favored. The Word says I am a child of the Most High God. The Word says I am the head, and I am not the tail. The Word says I'm going to be blessed going in and blessed coming out. Somebody help me this morning. You've got to preach yourself that way sometimes. You've got to talk yourself. You've got to have self-talk in your life. You've got to have self-talk. In other words, when the world around you is crumbling, you can stand. When the world's looking bad, you can stand. See, I have to self-talk myself. I have to remind myself every day of my life who I belong to. Because I'm telling you, Christians will shoot the wounded. Churches will hurt you. Somebody help me. You, you may be sitting there and saying, oh, I'm okay, preacher. I got it. I'm telling you, Christians will shoot the wounded. I'm telling you, your family will turn against you. What I'm telling you, this government that we've got today needs some praying time. Amen? What I'm trying to tell the church today, sometimes you've got to stand up and say, you know what? I'm going to talk myself happy. I'm going to preach the name of Jesus. I'm not going to back off, back down. Lord, I come today to praise your name. I ain't going to shut up. I'm going to self-talk. I'm going to give God praise. Well, I've got a chance to give him praise. I'm not going to shut up. And that's what you've got to do. Even if nobody else will stand up and y'all sit there and go, well, they always stand up. Stand up and give him praise, honor, and glory. Clap your holy hands design. And what I'm trying to tell the churches is this. It's okay to get crazy at a UK and Louisville football game. It's okay, man, to spend your last dollar on something that is not eternal and you think it's okay. What I'm trying to tell the churches is what I am preaching today, Scott Cochran, will last forevermore. God will do what God said he would do. God is on time all the time. He's the bread maker. He's my God in this house today. Somebody praise him in here. Woo! We're just going to take a praise break. Come on, just praise him this morning. Just go ahead and thank God that he didn't forget about you. Come on, stand up. Yeah, I'm not going to let nobody sit and shout, shout me. Yeah. Woo. I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord. You say, Brian, what's happening? I'm telling you what's happening. See, what just happened, I truly believe according to the Bible in Revelation, 
God says, if you give me praise, heaven will stand up. See, listen to me. God deserves what we just did. I know it may feel awkward. And you say, this is not, I hear this all the time. This is not a Baptist church. You're right. It's a God church. I hear it, all my religious people, I hear y'all taking note now. Brother Brian said this wasn't a Baptist church. Talk to him Monday. Let me save you time. Let me save you time, paper, and effort. I'm standing on the principles and the word of God. I will not, I shall not back down because denominations will not be in heaven. Just Christians will be in heaven. Somebody praise him in the house. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Woo! My God, the waters. <laughs> Some people look at me like, yeah. See, I have to tell myself I always won't be down. I have to tell myself and preach myself and tell myself, you know what, it's just a season. I'm coming through. I'm going through this stuff. I know some of you have been in a long season, and this is a word straight from heaven to you. Don't give up. Hang on. Your best days are yet ahead. I, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, ain't no shadow going to scare me back in the tunnel. I'm going to rise up, praise up, woo, pray up until the Lord shows up. That's what you got to do. Woo. Boy, I feel it today. I love my Jesus. Hallelujah. See, I want to be such a flaming evangelist. I want to be so on fire for God that when I wake up my eyes, one of my eyes just go like that. The devil gets, says, oh, no, Brian's awake. I want the devil to shake when I stand up and I say, today, I'm going to lead somebody to Jesus. And the devil says, oh, no, I better send more angels out because Rafferty's awake. He's crazy. Hey! And he believes Jesus. He believes the Bible. He thinks he can walk on water. Right. I want, when I wake up, the devil goes, oh, no, I need more death angels over here. Rafferty's awake. Also found this. Beth texted me this this week, and I want to I show it to you to bless your heart this morning. I want to be so full of Christ that when a mosquito bites me, she flies away singing, there's power in the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Hey! Yeah, bite me, bite me, bite me. Bite me if you want to. But there's power in the blood of Jesus. Y'all can sit there if you want to. That way, if a mosquito bites you, I'll be going, oh, shoot. And I'm going to say, I'm telling you, next mosquito try to bite me, I'm going to say, bite me. We'll get you some of that. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, I want to be so full of Jesus that Satan, when I wake up, he'll say, oh, no. I want us to come to church on Sunday mornings, and when we walk through them doors, he goes, oh, no, Elkhorn's in the house. Oh, no, they ready to praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo! Ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party. Hey, I feel the Lord this morning. How about you? Woo! I have people say all the time, boy, Brian, you turn red face. You're going to die. You're right. One day I will. But it won't be from a mosquito. That's all I'm telling you guys is what's in that Bible. The hardest thing that I have to do as a pastor is to convince Christians that the Bible will do what it says it will do. All, all Christians want to do is have stinking business meetings and vote. What should we do for Jesus Christ? It's pretty simple. Lead people to God. Lead people to Jesus. I had a woman come to me and she said, when are we having a business meeting? I said, we're not. And I know that makes some of you, ooh. But here's the deal. If you trust your leadership, churches is the only one that has to vote on stuff. It amazes me. If you trust your leadership, let us pastor. Let us be deacons. Let us do what God has called us to do. And if we're wrong, you hold us accountable. You hold, us, you hold our feet to the fire. But if we're growing and things are going good, you better be careful. Touch not my prophets and do them no harm. Touch not your preachers and touch not your deacons. 
Hallelujah. That was good, Jesus. Thank you. Because here's the thing. Everybody wants to vote on, on what's happening. Here's what's happening at Elkhorn. Y'all ready? It's good. I like, I like bragging on Jesus. Well, why he, all he does is boast. The Bible says if you boast, boast in the Lord. So I can't think of a better person to boast on than my best friend, Jesus Christ. Check this out. Over 600 salvations and baptisms. Y'all missed it. Over 600 salvations and baptisms. <laughs> Next Sunday night, guess what we're doing? Filling the baptistry back up again. And here's what the convention will do. They'll call and they'll say, do you think they were false? Do you think they really did it? And I'm sitting there going, are you God or my God? I'm not here to judge if their salvation worked or not. I'm here just to catch the fish, and God will clean the fish. Woo, 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 woo. I'm going to have a turtle man in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so if a mosquito bites you, will you watch your fly away singing, there's power in the blood? When you wake up every morning, does the devil start trembling and shaking and saying, oh, no, they're awake. Where you at right now? How do we get through tough times? Simple. Just meditate. You've got to self-talk yourself to victory. You've got to put it in your mind that no matter what comes against me, that me and God are the majority. That no matter what comes against my marriage or my children, they don't belong to the devil. I've already gave my children over to God. I'm just burning them for a while. So guys, here's the deal. Praise team, you come. How do we do it? you got to preach yourself happy. How do you do it? you just got to tell yourself how good God is. Sounds simple. How many of y'all think this sermon, does it sound so simple? But it's not. It's a profound message that if you ever get this in your mind, you'll become dangerous. You'll become dangerous. Hallelujah. So it's up to you right now. Some of you are sitting out here. You say, Brian, I've heard the songs. I've heard the message. I don't feel nothing. You know why? Because you, you may be at the bottom of the barrel. Let me tell you, God's got long arms this morning. And he'll get you out. No matter what's going on in y'all's life, you name it right now. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. I don't, listen to me. Don't rationalize. Don't try to compromise this. You fill in the blank right now. You say, Brian, this is a problem. And I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. I'm telling you what Christians must do we got to quit compromising on what people think is right or what people think is wrong. And we got to stand up for what God said is right and what God said is wrong. Well, I hear this all the time. I had a woman this morning. She said, well, I just don't want to cause no problems. I said, that's what they said when they took prayer out of school. That's what they said when they took the Ten Commandments out of Washington, D.C. Kurt, I, I'm telling you today, we got a God in us. That if we'll just sit there, I didn't say a petition. I didn't say get big signs and say, we are a Christian. They ought to know you're a Christian. I'm just saying, man, be the light. Oh, God, I meditate on you this morning. I self-talk myself this morning. That, God, it may not look good and I'm being thrown under the bus, but, God, I'm going to row. <laughs> I'm going to row. And, God, people may be rising up against me, but I'm going to talk self. I'm going to self-talk myself. That no matter what's going on, I'm going to praise the Lord. And if they want to join in, they're more than welcome to join in. But if they don't, it's not going to stop my praise. Right. Y'all getting this word this morning? That no matter what, somebody come on, help me praise him. No matter what, Brother Jim, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm not going to back off. I'm not going to back down. Because what I've got in me is sovereignty. What I've got in me is the majority Hallelujah, hallelujah. What I've got in me is good. And if God's in me, no matter what my circumstances may look like, even though I may be going through bankruptcy and foreclosure, my God is for me. Ha! Ah, I believe it. I believe it. I'm not just preaching this to, to try to convince you of it. I believe what I preach. And watch this. He works. He works, Kurt. So my prayer for you this morning, no matter where you're at, 
no matter where you're at, you got to step talk. I'm coming out. I'm coming out of this. Though I walk through the valley of shadow, 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 I'm not going to let a shadow scare me. I'm not going to let a shadow scare me. I'm not going to let an individual stop me. I love y'all, but guess what? I can praise God with you or without you because I know what I got in me.